Hello, everyone. So today we're going to discuss Underwater by Anne Fetterman. Now, um, like other stories we've observed, uh, I'm going to continue to integrate for this narrative structure. I'm going to continue to integrate the use of the freight type pyramid. And as you can observe here, we're, we're noticing the same elements, the protagonists and the circumstances. We define what the clear goal of that protagonist is, regardless of the circumstances, the conflict affecting um, the reaching of that goal, the rising action, the interaction of the protagonist um, with the conflict, right? How are we attempting to overcome that conflict? And um, whether or not we overcome the conflict becomes about the, the falling action. So, so this is the structure we'll continue to use, and let's uh, let's observe the story. So, the story begins uh, with a statement. Of course, it's a narrative, so everything's going to be a series of statement. But the interesting thing about the the initial statement is that it's an it's a statement that she regards and refers to uh, a statement that she. Uh, she's making when she is a child, right? And she says, I was an impatient child who disliked obstructions, traffic jams, clogged bathtub drains, ketchup bottles you, you, you had to bang, et cetera, et cetera. And then continues to tell the story of these, uh, these little twigs or, or, or uh, you know, uh, branches or what have you. And as they're flowing down the river, if they ever hit a snag, Vatiman uh, refers to the removal of obstacles so that the, the snag can continue to flow. Right? Um, so our protagonist, and, 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 the, and, and, that, and those, uh, that statement is going to come into play in a bit, uh, but uh, the protagonist and Vatiman, she's facing, um, she's facing what? For the most part, what you know, what, what young people usually face, and that's that's the sense of you know, uh, for good or bad, wanting to speed up life a little bit. At least when you're young, right? Um, you, you're it, you know, it's a disregard of maybe the ideals of responsibility or the ideals of of uh, um, patience. Um, and, and she says it, you know, I'm, I am an impatient teen. Uh, I'm, in, or I'm an impatient child, you know. Um, well, you know, she's no different. She's, no, she's, she's basically telling what a lot of youth are going to say. You know, I don't have time for that. Bring about the joy of life, right? Um, you know, I'm too young to be dealing with responsibility, so to speak. So these are the circumstances she's facing. You know, she's an impatient teen and she's excited because she's on this month long wilderness program in Western Wyoming. So what's her goal then? Well, the circumstances to a certain extent help define a little bit of that goal. And that's, you know, I'm young. And so I want to experience something adventurous. I want to ex experience something young. Let me travel. Let me engage in this collaborative venture with friends, or maybe even individual venture uh, about myself with the wilderness. Um, so she's young. She's out there. She's having fun. She's kind of, to a certain extent, you know, being a woman and all, a uh, type of Joan and Arc, Joan of Arc type of uh, warrior endeavor, right? You know, uh, if nobody's done it before, I'm going to do it. And so, uh, again, um, let's speed things up. Let's get things going. Let's not delay anymore. Let's, let's get a move on on the venture. Well, it sounds great, right? It sounds great that Anne Fadiman is here and she's young and she's a woman and, and, and she's about to undertake this great adventure. Um, and she's ready to run, right? She's ready to run and speed about and, and, and undertake a great adventure. 
Well, voila, what happens as she's undergoing this adventure? Um, she witnesses uh, a young boy, Gary. And unlike everybody else, Gary decides to wear boots, hiking boots. Uh, everybody else is wearing tennis shoes. Uh, you know, kind of makes sense given that you're you're aboard a, a type of canoe raft. And uh, one of the one of the rafts flips over, and I guess as as Gary falls about in the raft, and uh, the feet hit the ground, you know, the river in which the the, the rafts are are running. Um, it doesn't. It's not very high, right? It's right below the waist, so it doesn't necessarily. It's it's not necessarily dangerous due to its uh, depth, but the river is nevertheless flowing at such velocity. And he gets his uh, he gets his uh, boots stuck there. Now remember, there these are these are teens. He gets his foot stuck there. And as the current pushes, you know, uh, comes about and pushes Gary, it bends him over. And, and once it bends him over, the water starts flowing over him. And, and it's, you know, she says, once that occurs, the, the, with the speed of the water, it's like tons about you. And so any, any attempts of Gary to push upward, they're, they're denied. And they're denied because of the the velocity at which is the water's moving. It's kind of like a little physics lesson here, right? Um, well, she's witnessing this. I mean, my goodness, think of a teen witnessing someone drowning. I, I can't even imagine what that what that must be like. And so, you know, here we are thinking about the trauma that must be uh, undergoing this child's mind. Um, and she she confesses and she says she says look i i didn't know how to handle um gary's drowning so my mind was tickering with other images other things and she says it you know she kind of apologizes for it she says i couldn't help it and she refers to it as you know one of one of the images is that she was referring to it as the uh, flayed skin of Saint Bartholomew. I mean, kind of a icky picture, right? But I guess if we're picturing a body underneath the water, it, it does look somewhat like a flayed skin of sorts. And, and she refers to other images uh, for the most part. So, so this is really interesting, right? It's it's kind of. I mean, and we're going to say, well, "Gosh, what a disrespectful child!" But instead, remember, she's young. She's wanting to flow through life at a you know breakneck speed so to speak and the way of her dealing with the therapy of a drowning child was to try to sway away that image of gary drowning ultimately uh, um you know she's going to have to realize the the reality of things so but but it's interesting right and this is the conflict that she's facing right this is the the, the, the dealings with uh, uh, um, Gary's death. And so the rising action here is initially to kind of refrain from accepting the death of a boy. Um, and, and, so, and so what's the rising action? How do you deal with the death of Gary? Right? How do you confront this reality? Um, well, as as you know, it, as Gary's drowning, um, it's kind of a it's kind of a a reality check uh, for uh, for Anne, and this reality check, what's occurring at least in this point, is the fact that um, okay, you know, I want to go through life at a certain velocity, at a certain speed. And unfortunately, at this point now, I can't do that. I, I, I have to face the fact, um, I have to face the fact that here's a boy and he's drowning and there's nothing I can do about it. And so I have to accept 
the obstruction and, and it's a terrible way for me to refer to to a, a child right a, a drowning child but in the metaphorical symbolic sense a reference to gary um you know she's she's referring to him as a you you, you can almost argue that he's he's a type of um type of allegory maybe even right uh a type of anecdotal reference of reverting back to your childhood and thinking you know i don't have to face obstructions i can just remove the snags and everything will be just fine except in this case how do you get the how do you get rid of the obstruction of the loss of life and, and that brings about the falling action, right? That brings about the, the uh, kind of like a, a, a little gleaming glimmer of light inside where, where Anne is now all of a sudden saying, gosh, you know, um, I'm picture, I'm, maybe I'm perceiving life wrongly. Maybe, you know, if, if I don't cut it out, then then i might i may very well also be in the future or, or maybe sooner i might wind up like gary right we're, we're kind of just rushing through life without taking a deep breath and reflecting and saying all right take life slowly cautiously prudently um for for this wanting to rush through life i may very well wind up with loss and regrets and so what's the message then when we get to the end of the story i think it's a beautiful message where she says okay here i am now now let's think about this for a second think about the beginning of the story it's a beautiful thing she gives a quick now now i had previously stated issues of time and i had previously said make sure you're not telling a story that takes place over the course of uh days or weeks or months or years right tell a in the moment story now Anne fanny man does do that right with the only two exceptions being the beginning and the end so she does it's a brilliant it's the brilliance of her as a writer in that she quickly tells the reader look i'm having a in the story memory right at the beginning and then i'm referring to in the story fast forward to a almost like a present day consciousness so i'm not writing a story about the now i'm writing a story that occurred but you're gonna live it as if it was the now with only these two slight, two slight polars of my infancy and my adulthood. And in between, I'm gonna show the lesson learned that showed almost like a, like a, like a transition, right? Like an unfolding. Here I am, the, the almost ignorant, naive child uh, wanting to rush through life, thinking that I, you know, could rush through life seamlessly without any um, conflicts or flaws or things of the sort, only to realize at the very end um, that now, gosh, I want to back ferry. I want to suspend myself, and and if I were to do that, or had I done that. I might avoid many things, harsh words, foolish decisions, moments of inattention. Think about it, this is such beautiful writing. Um, if you're writing a story where, where you know, you're writing the, the essence of a, a particular story, but you revert to these little memories of sorts to demonstrate to the reader a, a type of message learned, so to speak, then it's just a great craftfulness of writing, right? Here's the beginning, and here's why I wound up at the end, and here's what happened in the middle, okay? I hope this helps you, right? It's a very brief interpretation. Uh, you can continue further study. 
on a great story. Thank you.